Let's bring him in. We're going to talk with a big YouTuber. They'll have advice for me and Uber. Good information that we'll imbibe. Just make sure that you like and subscribe. Click that bell. Get ready for big tuber time. Yeah. All Epic. right. Waiting for... Here he is. It's the history guy. Hey. Yeah! Hey. Welcome to the show. So for those who aren't familiar with you, uh, let me just go ahead and share your YouTube page. Uh, a quick overview of what you do, sir. Uh, well, I'm a YouTuber. I do history on YouTube, and I have about 700,000 subscribers. Uh, we go up three times a week and do 10 to 15 minute videos on short forgotten history subjects. Just tell stories about history, which is something I've always loved to do, and I get paid to do. That's just wonderful I, I i watch your videos all the time and one of the great things about uh history is and and your channel is that it appeals to both men and women my channel is leans more dudes if you look at my analytics it's like are there any women there's a few watching and i think that's because their boyfriends and husbands make them watch but uh you have a very wow. successful channel how how long have you been uh doing the youtube uh it'll be three years in march Okay. So not that long. I mean, uh, there's a lot older channels than us, but uh, long enough that it feels like forever. We've done about 500 videos. And what did you do before YouTube? I, I've done lots of things. I used to work out in the corporate world, but I uh, I got I got laid off, which will happen in the corporate world. But I had uh, I had kind of a it wasn't a golden parachute, but it was maybe like a I don't know like a mildly bronze parachute. It was <laughs> it was enough that I could uh, take some time to come up with something else, and so. I was looking for lots of things, and one day I just decided I wanted to do uh, a YouTube channel. Uh, and I have the the world's uh, most forgiving wife who said, okay, I'll support you through that, and this is what we've done since. Yes, uh, Heidi is your wife's name. And Heidi, yes. That's she, sure she's on right now somewhere, yeah. Yeah, she does uh, research. What What is her... Uh... She, does, she writes for me. Uh, she mm -hmm. uh, used to be a journalist and a librarian, so she researches and she writes for me. But she does episodes every now and again. So one of the reasons that... Maybe the only reason that we have any female viewers is because Heidi also does uh, history sometimes. Well, you know how ladies love bow ties. Oh, yeah. I, 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 Always work for me. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Kelly? Yeah, I went back. Speaking of bow ties, I went back to your first couple of videos. There was no bow tie there. I think the yeah. bow tie entered the picture in video three. And then what? You just kind of realized, okay, this could be a, a great gimmick or it kind of caught on. What happened? Yeah, I mean, that huge number of fans that we had by the third episode, uh, I think they both said they liked the bow tie best, and so we stuck with it. So, yeah, uh, yeah I, didn't start, I didn't start out as part of the idea. I just happened to have one. I've, I've worn them in the past, and I actually do tie my own bow ties. And if you can look closely, this is actually a custom-made bow tie, the tie bar made for us. It says the history guy on it. But anyway, uh, so that's part of what happens when you get to be a big YouTuber is a big bow tie maker makes you your own custom bow tie. When, but, uh, I just I put one on one day and uh, the viewers said they liked it, so I've worn them since. Yeah, I, I think everybody's gonna have their thing in our world. Uh, I think you know people know Mr. Steel. He's a he's a drone guy, he's an FPV guy, and he has uh, his mustache is his logo. So everybody kind of has their thing. I guess what would mine be, Kelly? <laughs> uh, ugly shirts. That's it. It's the ugly shirts. That's what it is. <laughs> um, so. How long was has it been a constant? Have 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 you had uh, the ebb and flow of your channel? When did you realize that? All right, I'm going to pour all of my effort into this and see what happens. By the way, before you answer that, if you have any questions for the history guy in the chat, please please ask them. And, uh, yeah, I'll try to watch the chat here. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, uh, I had made a dime out of YouTube in the first year, and around February, so almost a year, or so I started March of of 17. Around February of 18. I had a little bit of difficulty one day. A script got lost and, uh, uh, you know, the, the computer lost. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. It's not making money. This isn't worth it. And, my, and Heidi just kind of calmed me down and said, you'll be okay. And uh, the next week, one of our videos started hitting and money started coming in. Uh, and that was the first time we saw that we'd gotten up to the $100 so they would even send us a check. It's exciting, uh, and though. By that uh, August... Uh, I was able to tell Heidi uh, that she could leave her job if she wanted to because we were making enough on the channel that she didn't have to work. So wow. that was took a year to get anything and took about eight months after that to be, you know, making enough. And uh, now I do, you know, better than I did in a cube in a corporate world. Yeah. And I, a big part of your success seems to be the supportive wife. Note to self, get a supportive 
wife. So that, I, I would okay. recommend that. To, that was the first thing I would recommend to anybody with, who wants a YouTube channel is get a supportive wife because uh, then you can make anything succeed, even a even a YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, uh, Kelly, did you have something else? Yes. I know you were a history major, I think, in college. Were you ever a history teacher or professor? Uh, I was a professor uh, at Northern Arizona University, which is in Flagstaff. Lovely place to be. But I taught speech communication, and I was the, the debate coach. So I did teach uh, some history of communication courses, but mostly I taught public speaking courses. Okay. And I think a few people are asking you about uh, your set, uh, the hats and the bugle in the background. Uh, where where are you? Is this your house? Is this a, a this warehouse? Is, this is my house. Yeah, uh, the studio is in my basement. Uh, so it started out as my office, and now it's my studio. I've been collecting the stuff since long before the YouTube channel, and so this is my chance to put it up there for people to see. You're not seeing anywhere close to the size of the collection. I have about a hundred, um, you know, military hats, vintage and antique military hats. Uh, uh, the bugle. So that's a that's a British bugle, a B flat behind me, and this is a. This is also a British sword. This happens to be. This is a George sword, so it's got the. It's got the. You can tell it's a George sword because this is this is the the the, the cipher of King George. All right. Uh, and uh, I don't know. There's all sorts of stuff back there. Kind of this. You can wear this helmet if you want to. And do you, do you, I imagine people send you a, a lot of people, interesting things? People do. Uh, you'll see a sixty a sixty year old uh, box of crackers up there behind me, right at that, that gold <laughs> thing. That's a sixty year old box of crackers. A viewer sent that just to display it. Uh, and uh, let me see if I can scroll up a little bit. Yeah. You can see there, someone sent me, that's a, that is a Russian MiG helmet. Oh, and wow. That. So what I say to viewers uh, is if you want to send something, I just promise I'll take care of it and I'll display it on set and, and everybody can see it. What's so your... The stuff, you know, I collected, but some of the stuff, you, you know, once you get fans, they'll send you all sorts of crazy things. What's your favorite collectible or piece of memorabilia you have? Which one would you never part with? Oh, uh, you know, I... I'm no good with, you have to ask Heidi about that. I'm absolutely no good with, with uh, favorites at all. But uh, if you look uh, if you look in the back, you see a silver plate kind of back in the corner there. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's, a, that's a, a trophy from the National Speech Tournament when I was a speech competitor. So uh, when I lost almost everything else I had, I had that little silver plate, and it's still back there. So I guess I would have to say that. Though, though this, is, uh, this is the YouTube. Ah, here, yes. The YouTube silver button. Oh, no, I'm not going over there. So I, I think I'll probably hang on to that with the silver plate. And I hope to get a gold one, you know. Yeah, you're, you're not that far off. And uh, I, far, yeah. um, there's a link in the description. Please subscribe to The History Guy. Uh, I have to confess, um, sometimes I will play, I'll, I'll, put, I'll make a playlist of like two or three of your videos and just put it on the phone as I try to go to sleep because your voice is so calming. And that's not an <laughs> insult. That's like he's just telling me about some submarine or something as I okay. as I drift off. Yeah, yeah. Your your I voice wish is... it would put me to sleep. I, I don't want really to sleep so much. <laughs> um, Jacob uh, wants to know what's the flag on the left? Uh, that be your stage right? Okay, yeah. So uh, that is uh, that's actually a cavalry. That's a that goes on the end of a lance, a banner. Uh, and that's for the uh, 21st Lancers, which is a British cavalry regiment. The, the, today, they're actually an armored regiment, but uh, th that's when they rode horses and had a lance, and it's got a skull and crossbones on it, and then it says, or glory underneath, because their motto was death or glory. And, All right. Uh, I, I, don't, I always like the 21st Lancers. You know, I love history, but also my name is Lance, so. <laughs> yeah, that's, Lance that's kismet. It's was, was a good thing to hang up. What's your favorite kind of video to create? What, what, I mean, as I, I far love, as I mean, I love all eras of history. So I mean, and I love telling stories of history. So it's hard for me to pick favorites. Uh, but uh, if you if you can look, and if you if you look uh, on the description when I'm doing an episode, you can see who wrote it, and you'll see the ones that I wrote uh, are you know very often I love like World War II sea stories. Uh, so I, I love when you can like say dig in and and get a, a you can actually get the uh, the battle reports from the officers that were involved, and then you can get a really good meaty story there. So I've got a lot of stories where it's just, just a submarine and a ship, and for 15 minutes you can just tell a really fun story. And uh, Chuck Clark wants to know, do you have any drones? I mean, this is a drone channel after all. It is a drone channel. I, I, uh, I don't. I have I have a little remote control helicopter in here somewhere, but I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> sure the battery's burned out on it. That's the, well, the closest. And it, it appears only to go up and down. I've never been able to get it to hover. It either goes up and bounces off the roof or it drops straight to the ground. So. Uh, I'd need some help even to make that one work. Well, I'd, I'd be happy to help you. Um, so let's get into some uh, meat and potatoes here uh, as far as YouTube uh, goes, because there's a lot of creators who, you know, are, are envious of uh, people who have many, many subscribers, as am I. Um, I'm around 113. 
thousand. I would also like to grow, as would anybody. I mean, you know, there is yeah. a certain hierarch hierarchy that that happens. Um, people treat people with large number of subscribers different, and I'm sure you can. Mm -hmm. uh, t yeah, you notice that as they grow. You certainly notice things. I mean, things like sponsorships are much easier to. I don't have to search for sponsorships. We actually can be picky about them. Mm -hmm. You start getting invited uh, to do different things with YouTube. I'm in some different programs, and I also get things like uh, speaking engagements and stuff like that. So bigger is better. I mean, you know that subscribers does not translate into money directly. Uh, I mean, that's really that's really viewers. But uh, how many times your your videos get viewed? But uh, and, you know, I someone pays twenty dollars, you sing a song for them. So I'm sure that's where you're making your money. As well, yeah, viewers. I mean, y y it's important to d diversify. You can't it's just count on AdSense. Uh, now, well, I, 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 if we do live cast, I will promise all my audience that I, I won't sing. Uh, you might, <laughs> maybe I should sing and you can pay me $20 to stop. Yeah, yeah, I should have mentioned that. Uh, $30 and I won't sing anymore. <laughs> but uh, so you don't do you don't do live streaming yet? I haven't done live streaming yet. No, we put, we do three episodes a week. So this is I mean, if you've seen one of my episodes, it's a lot of research to put together an episode. So that gives me about two days to pick a topic, research a topic, write a script, tape the script, produce the video and have it up the next morning. And so no, we haven't we haven't moved into live streams or anything else. It's, it's enough to keep me busy what I'm doing now. We might, we might start doing maybe a Saturday live stream or something like that, but uh, we haven't tried it. But that is a good place to test it out. It seems to be working uh, here. Your wife Heidi does a majority of the research. And so are you actually editing videos or do you dole that uh, out? No, Heidi, Heidi writes some of the episodes, but most of the episodes, and uh, not to, not to, not to diss Heidi at all, but I, I write about two thirds of the episodes that we produce. I do the research and, and the, the, oh, okay. the writing. Uh, and then we have other writers uh, that we, that we pay. They're all really close. It's either very close friends or family members, but we other have, we have other people who write scripts for me. Uh, but uh, I do all the uh, I do most of the scripts I do or, or a, a, a good chunk of the scripts and the research. I also do. I film this just in the room here by myself. Uh, I edit and put it all together using Power Director. I do the research to get all the pictures and media that go into it. So it's pretty much a one a one man show. I'm in the picture. Everybody's talking about Heidi. Yeah, uh, oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. You, it's, everybody want to see Heidi? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bring Heidi in. Did we freeze there, though? No, uh, I, uh, so maybe, go, this I is the know. brains of the outfit. <laughs> Hi, I could not let, I was listening to you guys upstairs and I could not let this go that I, I am not the brains behind the channel in any way. <laughs> he created it. This was his brainchild. I help with, you know, search engine optimization terms. I, I write, you know, funny little scripts every once in a while and sometimes I'll pop on, but yeah, and what? She's, she's been on some scripts. But this is, this is Lance's. This she's is Lance's. got a lot of skills that apply, but uh, yeah, for the most part, I produce the, the, the videos themselves. Yeah. What and, did, she's not the history fan that I am, but. What, what did, uh, Heidi, what did your work say when you said, uh, I'm leaving because of YouTube? <laughs> uh, they were flabbergasted. Really, um, I worked for a, it was it was a small little um, newspaper in Southern Illinois. I had my own column, um, I, which you know is almost unheard of nowadays. And so I, I said, well, um, you know, Lance is going to make a go of this, and he's asked me to join him. And uh, my boss said, I wish you guys luck. He said because I, you know. So like he was feeling really sorry thing about YouTube. It, it, was, it, it seems like it's been around forever, but. You know who actually makes a living doing this? Nobody it, that I knew. <laughs> it it is amazing how many people are surprised. When I tell them what I do for a living, which I just started a few months ago. Hopefully, it's sustainable. But they look at me like first, it's maybe a little bit of pity, and then confusion, like <laughs> like what? I didn't know you could make money with YouTube. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, people, people still ask me what my day job is. Yeah, they do. And, and in fact, we have an employee now. I, someone's day job is working for the history guy. So it, it is, you can certainly make a living. It's an interesting, you know, small business. Uh, but like any other small business, it's a lot of work. I mean, you have to be constantly making content and then uh, supporting your channel. And if you don't put your heart into it, like any other business, it's going to go out of business. Well, I have but to. It, it, it certainly can uh, can make a living. I have to compliment you. Very often when I have guests on, I will uh, look at their channel and go back to the very first video that they posted. Um, some really large channels have like, here I am walking with a duck or, you know, just something, <laughs> me, at the, me at the beach or something. And, and, and then I'll spring that on. And I go, well, I got to clean my channel up. But you, your channel is so neat and tidy. It's all very consistent. And maybe you can speak to that for anybody listening. Consistency 
I, I tell everybody, consistent consistency is very important, and sincerity, which you convey very well, uh, and consistency with your uh, content and with your thumbnails and everything. Yeah, it took us some time. I mean, we had to learn lessons, uh, but we didn't we didn't walk any ducks or anything to start with. Yeah. So, and uh, the, but the first one, I mean, that was my vision for what I wanted from the channel, and I've certainly learned a lot more about Power Director since. But I mean, I think it still follows the same general idea. I think we we stuck with that. And and from the nuts and bolts of the thing, a good tip would be to pick what you want your brand to look like early on. Yeah. Uh, we talked about it and we settled on, you know, what colors did we like? What fonts did we want to use? And we made sure to incorporate that in every single video. And it kind of pulled it together a little bit. It did. It, so, it took some time to, to realize that. But I mean, if yeah. you were to start a new channel and you want to be successful, I would say from the start, think in terms of, of, of what it's going to look like big. Absolutely. And then yeah. it stay consistent with that. I mean, we've always had simple rules like uh, make content that you would want to watch. Uh, because if you're making videos, you wouldn't want to watch that no one else is going to. And if you're making videos that you would watch, probably someone else is. But but also, I mean, just, uh, you know, we've moved in now. We've we've trademarked our brand and we're an LLC now. Uh, we're actually a corporation that's kind of hard, to, hard wow. to believe. And cool. So we got, we, we got trademarks and, 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 you know, bank accounts and everything that looks like a real business. Uh, and we do. We have uh, consistent branding across a number of uh, different ways that we do that. And that's something that we had to kind of realize as we went along. And it's something you want to plan. Uh, and you also have to realize because you have to play the long game with YouTube. You're right. You have to consistently put up quality content and you have to do it for a while. Expect not to make money for a year, a year mm -hmm. and a half. Uh, and and you, you should be putting up at least a video a week at a consistent time if you wanted to build audience. And so that's a lot to think about. And I have a lot of people ask me about YouTube channels and I say, you know, you know what's your idea? And they've got an idea. But I say, you know, if you can't in your head put together at least 50 things that you're going to cover, uh, 50 episodes, uh, then don't start a channel because you're 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 not going to make money before you run out of things to do. So mm -hmm. history, I mean, there's plenty of history. We get suggestions from viewers all the time. I could probably do this until uh, you know, in, for a hundred years. Uh, uh, if I'm around in a hundred years, I'll still be doing this. Uh, but 3D, of course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it'll be hol hologram, scratch and sniff, all that. Kelly, did you have a question? Uh, then I'll have a drone and we'll do that. Oh, right. somebody somebody did suggest that you do the history of drones. Would that be of interest to you at all? You know, I, it, it might be. Uh, uh, there's a lot of interesting things. I, yeah, actually, I think that's a great idea, and and we'll we'll add that to the list. Yeah. Who who was it? Uh, hang on. Who was it? What movie star? What actress was it that uh, that developed um, uh, frequency hopping? What was her name? Not to. Oh, oh, that's uh, that's Hedy Lamarr. Yeah. That's that's it. That yeah, would be a considered a, one of the uh, first actually, drones. They just used her in film because she was pretty, and that actually was frustrating to her. Uh, because she really had a brilliant mind. So she was just sitting there chatting with this musician one day, and they came up with this idea for a special torpedo uh, that ended up being the genesis of frequency hopping, which is necessary for, you know, Bluetooth technology, all sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. that's a great video, hitting yeah, Lamar, Lamar and the torpedo. And the torpedo. Yeah. I love that one, yeah. Yes, Kelly? Was there one video or one PR move or one marketing strategy that really paid off for you where you thought, okay, now the channel is going to start making money. Now we're seeing the residual effects of the work we've been putting in. Now we realize it's taken off. Or has it just been, like you said, good, consistent posting with a topic that everybody wants to take a look at? It goes in fits and starts. So, I, I mean, it hasn't been an, always an easy, easy line. Uh, and we've certainly had some videos that turned out to be really successful and we didn't expect that made a difference. But there's never been a th something that I would say was just a specific turning point. No. But, I mean, it's it's amazing. Uh, the, that first one I was talking about, we didn't make any money. And then all of a sudden, this one about a Pan Am flight that crashed in the ocean started getting tens of thousands of views, which was to us absolutely amazing. Uh, and that's really what got the channel, you know, making money. But the the biggest video we have is a, is a video about uh, Canadian screwdrivers. And yeah. <laughs> Canadian I screwdrivers. That, I had no idea that would be the biggest <laughs> video we ever made. But uh, so you get new audience. So, I mean, for us, you know, we try to predict, you know, what's going to do well. We, yeah, just, we never, we never. We don't. Do. I don't know when I put up a video, is it going to be a number one or is it going to be a number 10? But they do consistently well. But I mean, we can have videos do five times as well as another video. Uh, and we don't know what that's going to be. So it, that's part of the, I think, is you just have to be patient. And you, there's not necessarily going to be a big break. But well, it and, does and grow I over time. I have to say, consistency is key. But also, you have to have a unique voice. And I think part of what makes this channel so special is this dude right here who doesn't like to talk <laughs> about himself very much. But yeah. He, he has a 
how to tell a story. <laughs> and we kind of knew that going into it, you know, friends would listen to him talking about history and it was interesting. And it's kind of why I got together with him. We, we were long distance dating at first. And so it was always over the phone. I love to listen to this man talk. Wow. So, so, uh, so part of it is, you know, you in this world of where they, they say it's something ridiculous, like a thousand videos are uploaded every second, something like that. Oh. Your voice needs to be yours and something unique that other people enjoy. And I, I think that's sort of the secret to this is that he has yeah, a unique and that's, voice. That's hard on yeah. YouTube. I can't tell. I mean, I can talk to people about what we did with our channel, but I can't tell if a, if a channel is going to succeed or not going to succeed. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, but there's plenty of people out there walking ducks. Uh, and yeah, so if, yeah. If all you got is you're walking your duck. Uh, if you don't have a specific spin on that, you're or probably not going to go somewhere. Or playing video games, or you know, it, yeah. it, you've got to find what's unique to you yeah, that if, you can offer to the world. And that yeah. people are going to want to pick you out of all this huge noise that is YouTube. They they got to pick you out of it. Uh, and that's not always easy. I mean, I, I I wouldn't try to replicate the history guy, but uh, but I I'm. I think that almost everybody has an idea in their head that could be a successful channel mm -hmm. if you put the effort into making it good in quality. Uh, but you really have to search for it because you realize everybody else is out there trying to do it too. And YouTube's mm -hmm. getting harder because more and more corporate stuff that used to be, say, on television is using the YouTube space. Yeah. And so now more, say, a, a large number of the YouTube views now are, say, a, a, a very popular comedians are taking their stand-ups that would get millions of people watching them on television or on HBO or whatever, right. and they're putting those into clips and they're putting them out on 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 YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, and that's taking more and more of the audience. So we're we're going to be competing. We YouTubers are going to be competing with the people who make television because YouTube's starting to beat television in some ways, mm -hmm. uh, and so you you really have to be able to distinguish yourself from a, not just a massive stuff, but a lot of professional stuff that's coming out too. Yeah. So you're saying my new channel, The History Dude, probably won't do as well as I think it might? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I don't think The History Dude has any chance of success. I wouldn't suggest anybody or if I ever, you know, go into the history. Or if I ever, you know, this guy, if I made, like, The History Gal, you know. Right. I, I just... I, I it tell wouldn't the same, it wouldn't have the same pizzazz. I, very true. I, I tell people all the time, you know, there's already, there's enough Casey Neistat's, uh, there's enough PewDiePie's, don't emulate. You can love the people you see on YouTube. Just don't emulate them because then you're just doing a bad impression of someone. And people yeah. are more savvy. The audience is more savvy than you think. Uh, they may not be able to actually put their finger exactly on why they don't like something. It's just something that's off about you. They don't like the cut of your jib or whatever. So uh, be your be yourself. And uh, you know, if you're shy, if you don't have the time, uh, then maybe YouTube's not for you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a lot of people are also just sloppy. They think they can do this in a hurry or just shoot something on their cell phone and throw it up. And so, I mean, we put a lot of time into production, a lot of thought into it. And the YouTube channels that succeed uh, are, I mean, even the ones where they're just playing video games or walking their duck, uh, the ones that <laughs> succeed are the ones that put a lot of care into making sure it's a quality product that they put up. Right. Uh, and so I'm sure there's YouTubers that are successful and aren't doing any work. I don't know who they are, but there's probably some out there. Well, uh, you that, do you know, figure out something where they don't have to hardly work and people are still watching it because because it's a World Wide Web and people will watch the dumbest things on Earth. Uh, I didn't want to do the sort of channel where, you know, I strap fireworks to myself or belched in the library or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whatever things people have going out there on YouTube. Now, clearly, uh, you, you have an amazing. Yeah, they, they are. You have but, an I mean, amazing. We, we uh, try for a quality product. Yeah. And I was going to say, you have a great personality. Um, I spoke oh, with well, you, you off air. Uh, and uh, I just knew you'd be fun. You're, you're a great guy, and I'm sure your wife can attest to that. Both of you are. Yeah, well, I'm um, laugh a minute. Yeah, but, sure. uh, you know, a, a lot of people, they watch YouTube, they get invested in the personality of the presenter, the, the person. Um, you... Oh, yeah, yeah, that was a surprise. I, I, didn't, I didn't expect that. But uh, we have a lot of people who, you know, who uh, when we post anything personal, talking about our lives or something like that, it's very popular. People are very excited about that. And we've done some things that are very personal to us. But it's, it's scary it to put scary. yourself out there like that. Cause yeah. It, you know, it's, I, the, it's the Internet. It so. is. I mean, well, anything you post on the Internet, you have to get ready for the people who hate it, too. That's, yeah. You have to be yeah. kind of thick-skinned. But uh, I'm, I'm, I, I don't think of a 700 subscriber channel as being terribly large. But I'm, I have been recognized out in public, and that is a very strange experience because this is not something – that you expect is just the first guy that recognized me. I was in an airport and he worked for TSA. So I'm standing there and this guy in the uniform, in the TSA uniform looks at me and his eyes get really big. And I'm like, did I, you know, did I spell cocaine on myself? What did I do? You know? <laughs> uh, 
So did, did, did and he goes, you're the history guy, and I'm like, I am the history guy. Uh, and it was pretty, it was pretty startling. Did, did he? Kind of uh, funny, but uh, it turns out it wasn't anything wrong with my bags. He just, he was a fan of the show. Did, and, so, uh, so did, that, did he uh, recognize? Kind of people start to care about you. Did he you recognize your voice, or were you wearing a bow tie? Because I can't imagine Larry the Cable Guy getting recognized much unless he's wearing a camouflage. Uh, wife beater shirt you know what i mean i wasn't i wasn't talking and i i i don't know i was just kind of standing there actually looking at my cell phone so i guess he must have just recognized me from the i didn't even have a bow tie on it's, it's your mug i don't it's, know but, <laughs> but uh, i i i also i i someone we were somewhere and, and someone said oh wait i hear him that's got to be the history guy so, yeah, so they, they, they so do they, recognize they the voice, voice yeah. sometimes or we were at a, a craft fair and i saw this guy he was kind of looking at us funny and he goes, I think that's a history guy, but but I haven't heard him talk, so I'm not sure. And I said, who around here is looking for the history guy? Because he's right over there. You know, let's introduce you. And so, so I didn't it's funny. It, it's just things that happen. That was, I was in the Denver airport, and someone said, I like your shirt. And I looked down, I was wearing a history guy shirt. And I said, well, you know, I'm the history <laughs> guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you, do you, um, one thing that I like to do, that I try to do, is keep up with um, emails and any communications, uh, 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 chats, comments, and that kind of thing. Do you, do you find time to, to do that? You know, I used to. I mean, one of the things about the channel is I used to personally kind of answer every comment and every email, and the, the bigger you get, the harder that is. So that's Impossible. one of the reasons, yeah, yeah, that's one of the reasons that we have an employee now, we have a business manager, is that she handles a lot of the correspondence just to make sure, because I want to I wanna personally respond, I want to be there for, for people, but we get so many comments and emails now that I can't do it all. So we've got someone that kind of sorts that and gets topic suggestions into the right box and things like that. So as you get bigger, I mean, there's more and more demands on you for things other than making videos and so the first person that i i hired as another person was someone who would handle those demands before i even looked at you know hiring someone to help make you know videos kelly yeah i think ken brings up a great point and you elaborated on it a little bit the difference between television and youtube you grow up idolizing a tv star for example i was a child of the 70s i loved carol burnett so now i'm a a guy who watches a lot of youtube and follow a lot of people and subscribe to their channel and it's exciting when that engagement happens, when I comment on a video and then the person who runs the channel, the guy I'm watching, comments back. It's like, boop, instant engagement. And it's yeah. exciting for the person viewing the video, which is something that could never or can never happen on television. Uh, yeah, very unlikely. You're not going to run into Carol Burnett. But uh, so so that that's true. You can be kind of more personal. That's one of the cool things about a YouTube audience. I, I You know, 700,000 in terms of subscribers, if you had a television show and you were only appealing to 700,000 people, you would never be on TV. Uh, but in you in the YouTube world, if you can get your content to the right people around the world, you know, there's, you know, a million people who love what you're doing. They're spread everywhere. And that's plenty enough to be successful. You can see why advertisers love that, because they're getting their advertising to the exact right person that's going to listen to it rather than having to pay to send it to a thousand people that don't care. Uh, so so y it is it is cool because you can have a smaller audience and do just as well as television and you can be a lot more personally involved with them. And I do like that. And I do try to comment and chat with people all that I can. I, I do say the bigger you get, the less it's possible to do that. So that I, I can't personally respond right. all the time like I would. Mo, mo subscribers, mo games. problems. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there's advantages too. You know, like I said, it's a cool day. The day that a sponsor calls you and says, I want to pay you to talk about my product on your video. I mean, that's, that's used, I, we get more money we, than we used to make in a month out of a sponsor. Uh, and so that's that's a huge deal. And when you're big enough that they're coming to you and asking for the you know the chance to get on your channel, that's a huge difference for you. Uh, so bigger is you know does a lot of things for you, but it also just means a lot more work, and you have to you have to deal with that. I, it's a great. It, I found that I I really enjoy being able to engage people all over the world. It really, it shrinks the world for me. I I, I have yeah. actual friends in other countries, and it's all because of this YouTube stuff. It, it's yeah. wonderful. It's cool. I mean, because we'll do history all over the world. So it's kind of cool when we do something on the other side of the world. We do something about Australia or China or, or something. And someone from there comments back and says, I learned, you know, about that. I'm like, oh, I'm sitting here in Illinois, you know, writing about what was going on in southern Australia. And so you get to talk to people and learn their history and find out they're excited about it. And it's also just really affirming to see that they're as interested in it as you are. It's really very cool. Yeah. Uh, if you just joined us, we're speaking with Lance Geiger, the history guy. And uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. I'm, I'm trying to, to read them, but they're going awful fast here. Um, so recently, you got together with the History Channel. You teamed up with oh, them. Yeah. and, and you did some stuff with the uh, A&E Networks and the History Channel, yeah. Yeah. What, what, what do you got coming up? 
Uh, and size will do that. Well, w what we did with the History Channel is called History at Home. And their idea was that uh, they were going to make short videos for kids are at home because of the COVID crisis, because school's out for the COVID crisis. So we did five episodes for them, and I think three have been posted. So two more of ours will be going up. Uh, and uh, then uh, they've had us do uh, another, you know, some stuff since. We did a, we did a live cast on uh, Instagram for them last week to help uh, sell their new uh, documentary that's coming out, the Grant documentary, which looks like a great documentary. It's great to see the History Channel getting back to history there. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, with no aliens involved, nearly as I can uh -huh. tell. I hope they didn't hear that. I don't want to be did, insulting did you, them because they've been did, really good to us. Did, They're great people over there. <laughs> <laughs> did you meet that? What's that uh, dude's so, name? So if you if you watch the at home, it is for kids. It's a little different than what we do on the channel, but they are. We do have we have three of them up, and we'll have a couple more going up. And the, one of the cool parts that when they when they talked to us about it, I, I they we had no idea who else they were talking to, so we didn't know that this is. I mean, there's you know uh, movie stars and sports stars and and uh, on that. So we're we're a more rarefied com company than than we realized. So I'm very excited. Lawrence Fishburne also did a, uh, a couple of videos for the History at Home, the same thing. So so this is the way I tell it. Since Lawrence Fishburne was in Mystic River with Kevin Bacon, and I'm in History at Home with Lawrence Fishburne, now I am just two steps on Six Degrees to Kevin Bacon. Oh yeah, that's man. What, that's what you get for, for being a big YouTuber. Yeah. That's awesome. Where, so where do you see your channel going? Uh, I mean, you're. Your your analytics still, I mean, skyrocketing. Yeah, I mean, like I say, it goes up and down. I mean, that's one of the odd things about YouTube. Uh, I I don't want to talk exact dollars, but I mean, we made twice as much in February as we made in April, and I have no idea why April was low compared to February. And and then we'll we'll swing back too. So uh, it's not it's not real even and consistent, but I mean, it still does grow very well over time. So uh, and uh, despite some other sort of offer sorts of things coming out, I suspect that we'll be doing what we're doing for a number of more years, as long as YouTube's around. Uh, and I'm hoping that we'll, uh, I, I mean, continue. I don't know, you know, when we might top out, but I'm hoping we're going to continue to grow so that we're, you know, at a million within a year of uh, subscribers. And then that might open up some other opportunities. But once you once you get bigger, I mean, the algorithm, everybody understands and fears the YouTube algorithm, but the algorithm likes bigger channels. And so it's hard to get your foot in the door and you have to you have to grow and you have to get views before they start giving you more. Uh, 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 well, they start showing you to more people and that you get more views. And we've hit that point now where we can continue to grow. That's why it took a year before we went anywhere. And just as soon as you kind of cross a line, then it then it's a, it's a good climb after that. Well, that I, I'm very, very happy for your success. And uh, okay, Kelly, did you have any other questions? So much. Yeah, a quick question from the chat. Uh, Tater Rogers in the chat wanted to know what video took the most research, the most time. Oh, yeah, you know, that's gosh. I mean, they all. Uh, I, I I don't know if I have a simple answer for that. Some of them take more time than others. Certainly, some of them the stories real uh, very easy to tell. But uh, I'm I'm usually taking two days to produce a video, so they they all yeah. kind of blend together in my head. So there there are some uh, where we've actually gotten to you know go out and, and in the field and do some research and stuff like that. And those uh, they take a little bit more time, but they're a lot more fun. I, I live not far from Alton, Illinois, so we really enjoyed making the one on the Alton Giant. Uh, uh, who uh, you can look that one up and, and we were able to go and look at his grave and look at uh, some of the artifacts that were in the museum from him and stuff like that. And so those ones take a little bit more time, but then we're able to, you know, actually get a much more personal touch to him. Yeah. I was just talking to Ken about that story earlier today. It's my favorite video on your channel, Robert Wadlow. Yeah. Robert Wadlow. Yeah. Amazing. amazing. Guy. Tragic, but amazing story. Yeah. And he's, he's kind of presented more like a freak show sort of thing yeah. and when, when you go and actually research his life he was just an incredible human being and and uh, i love that episode too partly too that's one of where the cat actually behaved which is which is very strange for us usually if the cat comes in he's doing anything but behaving <laughs> but the, the waddle episode the cat actually behaved for it but uh it was it was great to be able to go and you know actually look at his artifacts and get a feel for what he was like as a human being and and uh and I, we end that one saying, you know, he was the world's tallest human being. But when you understand his story, it's a lot more about the human being, a lot less than about the world's tallest part. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that one took some more work uh, because we were close enough that we could actually go and, and, you know, do the stuff in the field, which was which was really interesting to do. So for the, the creators that are watching right now, dreaming of one day having even part of the success that, that you've had, what what kind of encouragement can you offer them? Uh what 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 kind I of don't, I don't know if I have encouragement. Nine nine out of ten of you are going to fail. That's all I can say to you. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you'd make a great uh, uh, graduation speaker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good luck to you. I, I'm, I'm 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 totally unique. Uh, I, what I would say, what my experience is, is that uh, work pays off. 
I mean, if you uh, if you really focus on it, if you're making good stuff, you keep up making the good stuff, then you'll get rewarded for it. Uh, so it's it's a matter of diligence and patience. Uh, but I would also warn anybody starting a YouTube channel, just like anybody starting any business. I've had some some other friends start YouTube channels. They were unrealistic about how long it was going to take. Uh, and so if you've only got money for six months, don't expect to be making you know enough money to pay your bills in six months. Uh, but if you uh, if you have the time to dedicate to it and you care about the channel and you're doing something you love, then over time it will pay off and it can be a very good living doing what you want to do. If you like what you do, then people will like what you're putting out, yeah. you know? I think it's just, I mean, I love history. I think that shows. Uh, and if I was doing a drone channel, it probably wouldn't have done very well because I don't even own a drone. So it's it's a matter, but if you're doing what you love, someone probably else loves it too, and they're going to see that passion and that's where it gets successful. Awesome. Well, we appreciate your time today. Uh, w would you want to participate in something that we usually do with our guests called, would you ride it? Oh, sure. Okay. Look at him saying yes. He doesn't even know what it is. I will I explain. Is, but... uh, the would you okay. ride it thing is uh, you, you've seen these passenger drones where there's some kind of wacky contraption. And maybe you've done some history on those early flying machines with the spinnies and the flappies and all uh -huh. that. I have, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, it's kind of along those lines. There's a lot of companies developing passenger drones, and so I do a segment every week, and I get the opinion of our guest, Would You Ride It? And this week's Would You Ride It is called The Flight Cycle, F-L-Y-T Cycle. Not a lot of information about it. I'm a hard no. I think you'll see why. Uh, <laughs> this is an absolutely insane thing, but uh, let me know in the chat, Would You Ride It? Check this crazy thing out. Whoa. If you're not a fan of your shins <laughs> or any appendages, I, I I don't see why. I mean, he can't move his hands at all. And look, his oh. buddy is flying it. Do you, do you trust anyone that much to, to fly you in a thing? Wow. You're, you're, would, you, would you say it was called the Death Trap 2000? Is that what it's called? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. History guy, would you ride that? No. <laughs> Just look how bunched up he is. If you are terrified to move, don't ride in it. Yeah, and I know Kelly's answer because he has children that he wants to live for. Yeah, if it tips, he's in big trouble. If he falls out in any direction, he's in huge trouble. Yes. Yeah, that's... There's whirling sharp blades every direction. No, yeah, I wouldn't ride that. That's, that's, just, that's just crazy. And, and again, uh, I love you, Kelly, but I don't even trust you enough to control that with me sitting in it. Uh, people are saying, absolutely not. I don't see any yeses. Usually I'll get a yes from someone under 20, you know, because they're young and made of rubber. And they think they can live forever. But uh, yeah, that's a no, that's a no, that's a no. Uh, okay, very good. Well, uh, history guy, Lance Geiger, thank you so very much for coming down to, 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 to us uh, uh, teeny tiny creators. And uh, thanks for being the very first... Uh, Big Tuber on Big Tuber time. Uh, have me on again when you hit a million, and, and uh, you will know how it goes. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, that's my hand. Okay. Like <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, see you, man. Bye. Bye. Ah, he was awesome, wasn't he? Uh, he was terrific. I could talk to him all night. <laughs>